Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm the author of the Tanyuan Academy series, and this is English Nerd. So I forgot to say it in the last couple of videos, but Tanyuan Academy Stories, the uh, book of short stories connected to the Tanyuan Academy series is out and available in ebook, paperback, and hardcover wherever you get books. So if you like young adult fantasy, then you should definitely check that out. Okay, so today the topic is moving forward from the topic last week, which was preparing a literary analysis essay. Today is all about writing a great introductory paragraph. Now, it's not always the best practice to start with an introductory paragraph. It's perfectly fine. There's no law against beginning in the middle, and sometimes that's even a better way to go. But in the case of this series, I'm going to talk about the paper chronologically, so um, just throwing that out there. So in the last video, talking about how to prepare, getting your thoughts together, looking at the different evidence and whether your answer to the question is actually any good, um, I looked at crime and punishment in particular as kind of our example work. Um, the question being, is Raskolnikov's motivation for killing more selfish or selfless. I think it's pretty clear in the book that he's um, more selfish than selfless, but there are selfless moments and motivations that he alludes to throughout the story, so there is some debatability there. In any case, that is the prompt that we're working with. So I'm just going to work through what are some of the elements that can make a great introduction. Introductions don't have to be one size fits all, but I find that these elements tend to signal that somebody knows how to write a paper really well, has, knows how to organize their thoughts and grip the reader and keep everything relevant and moving along. So really everything that you want out of an introduction. Long ago in the mists of time, one of my very first videos in this entire channel was about introductions and a lot of the information here is going to be the same as it was there because a good introduction is a good introduction. So if you want to check that out, feel free, but just the quality of it's not quite as good. I think the angle is all janky and anyway, it was about time to do something that was fresh and new. So the first thing you want in your introduction is a good hook. Um, a good hook is not starting out with the year of someone's birth. It's not restating the prompt. It's, it's not those kind of boring placeholder kind of introductions. Nor is a good hook something that you could say in a movie trailer voice since the beginning of time. People have considered the idea of motive. That is too far out. You are way out in the stratosphere. You are too far away from the topic. Instead, a great hook is going to be um, somewhere in the vicinity of your topic or the book and grip the reader's attention. Now, I more recently made a video all about great hooks, and I'm going to link that down below. So if that's a weakness of yours, then Take a look at some of the options there. I really break down what are some uh, great ways to create a hook if you are blanking out and you're not sure what to do. A hook essentially needs to be relevant to the topic and interesting. You want to make sure that the reader is gripped from the very beginning, just as you want that for a fiction book, really any book, you want some, uh, it to start off in an interesting way. Um, since this is all about literary analysis, the next thing that you have to include within the next couple sentences uh, is the name of the work and the name of the author. In our case, that is going to be Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. But you might be writing about multiple works. In any case, you do need to write up front, name the work and the author, even if you think, well, it's obvious. I mean, who else would write Romeo and Juliet? still give that at, right up front at the beginning. Um, that's true for test essays even. Uh, so just, it's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so check, check. We have the hook, we have the work and the author. Make sure that you introduce the topic very early on. So if your hook is a little bit more about 
uh, Russian literature in general, then you want to pretty quickly get to the topic of motive uh, in Raskolnikov's murder. The murders that he commits, that is. So zero in on the topic and start to give any relevant summary that is necessary for understanding the the grounds for your argument. Now, this is not to say that you need to retell the whole story, not at all. Instead, imagine that you're writing this paper to somebody who has read Crime and Punishment, but it's been maybe a year since they've read it, and so they just need a reminder of the major plot points that are related to your idea. You might want to tease some of your evidence a little bit, but don't get too much in the weeds. Just start to talk about the work as a whole and particularly this aspect of it. All of your introduction should act as a funnel, starting broader and then getting more specific funneling in toward the final sentence, which is the most important, which I'll get to in a second. <clears throat> um, in addition to relevant summary, you also want to give any necessary definitions. This is not always going to be necessary to include, but if you're writing a paper about justice or about love or even about selfishness and selflessness, you want to make it clear how you are defining those big ideas. You don't want to leave it vague. Otherwise, I've seen a lot of people get into some logical inconsistencies or the definition will switch partway through the paper and then you really don't have that strong of an argument because what are you even arguing? So make sure that those definitions are up front so that people know uh, and can start on the same ground with you. Um, yes, so you're funneling everything down to the final sentence of the introduction, which traditionally and rightly so is the thesis statement. In the last video I made, I talked about how you are gathering evidence in order to answer the question given in the prompt, um, essentially coming up with your thesis statement. I wanted to talk a little bit more about thesis statements because it is such an important moment in your paper that's going to guide the rest of the argument and the rest of the body paragraphs, really everything um, hinges on a strong thesis. So it is a claim that answers the prompt. So our claim, my claim is going to be that Raskolnikov's motives are more selfish than selfless. So clearly answers all parts of the question. Um, it should be concise, unless your paper is, I would say, 20 pages or longer, there's almost never a need for it to be beyond one sentence. So just keep it concise. Make sure that it is provable. <laughs> um, don't, don't go out on a limb and say something like, well, Don Quixote acted that way because his diet was poor, which is a, an actual article that I read one time that was peer-reviewed. and that it, I was so shocked at how ridiculous that was because there, it wasn't provable and it was so beside the point that I just thought this is meaningless. Um, so it has to be provable, has to be debatable. If you're saying something like, well, Raskolnikov kills someone, let me prove it to you. Nobody's going to argue. There, there's really no point in trying to make that argument. So make sure that it is something debatable and be clear and specific in whatever the answer is that you're giving. Don't leave it like, well, it may be this. Make a clear claim um, so that the reader knows what it is. I, the whole thesis statement should be a roadmap for the paper. So you have your answer and many times people like to add some additional elements that strengthen that thesis statement as well. Just like there's not one way to do a good introduction, there's not one way to do a good thesis apart from having that clear claim. Um, but some great practices are to include reasons. So Raskolnikov's motives are more selfish than selfless because he is self-aggrandizing throughout the entire story. Uh, he gains nothing uh, besides pride from the action. You, you know, you just, you list a few items. For a five paragraph essay, for example, a lot of people like to list three major reasons why they believe that their claim is correct. And then those can guide their three body paragraphs. I'll prove this, this, and then the last one. 
And then something else, one last element that a lot of people add onto their thesis statements that I think can be a really great idea is a prolepsis. A prolepsis is just anticipating objections. So I assume, I hope that you've thought about the question from a few different angles and you didn't just cherry pick evidence that supported your claim. So there are times when Raskolnikov does act in a selfless way. He gives money to poor families. He considers the the how a lot of people will be better off if this pawnbroker is gone. Um, so you can address those things, um, although he sometimes acts or thinks selflessly at heart. Raskolnikov's motivation is selfish, and I know that because of A, B, and C. And then you wrap up your introduction. That is it. It shouldn't be, <clears throat> excuse me, it shouldn't be multiple pages long. You really want to get to the meat of the paper, which is the body paragraphs where you're doing the arguing. But it also shouldn't be three sentences. You know, give that introduction a hamburger and make sure that it really does flesh out your ideas and the work that you are working with. So those are some of my thoughts on introductions. I'm going to link the videos that I mentioned down below. If you're interested, you can take a look at those. Make sure to subscribe for more English nerdy goodness. Like this video if you like it, and I will see you next Monday.